Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you the basics of how to use functions in C++. So ideally for any function we have a function prototype above the main and below the main we define the function implementation. The function prototype is essentially a signature, for example void print welcome open close parentheses and a semicolon. And at the bottom for the implementation we write the same function signature but instead of the semicolon we have a block of code starting with the open and closed parentheses. And inside this block we can write any C++ code, any statements, loops, conditions, whatever we want to define. This is a self-contained code of block. It doesn't execute, it just sits there. In order to execute it, we need to call the function from the main. So here we have function call or function calls. For example, in this case we can type print welcome or close parentheses. This will continue or continue the program flow at the function. So it will run anything in the main whenever it sees the function call here. It will go to the function and then execute the statements inside the function. So for example, if we output welcome, this would this program would outcome welcome when we run it. So at the output you will see that it will show welcome here. It should be a lowercase n and then it'll end. If I don't have any call, so if I comment this out and I run my program again, uh, the program just ended without outputting anything because the function was never executed. So functions alone is just dead code. We need to call it from somewhere. Um, let's go over the details of a function. So here we have a function name that's an identifier just like a variable name. We should follow proper naming convention such as camel case. And, but this is really up to the programmer to decide whatever we want to call it. Then open close parentheses. This de denotes this identifier as a function. So the compiler knows this is a function. This, these, this function contains statements of code that can be executed. Since it ends with a semicolon, it is a prototype. And what the prototype does is when the compiler goes line by line and looking through the code here, the compiler knows I encountered a prototype so I know this function exists. And when it encounters a function call, it will look up. Is there any prototype for that function? Yes, there is. If there isn't, it would throw an, a compile error. And then later it will actually link the, the function call here to the function implementation. So whenever we run it, it will execute um, the implementation here. Now the last part of any function is a return type, in this case void. The return type is a value that any function can return. In this case I have void and void means my function does not return anything. Now let's add a few statements here. So let's say this is a function, this is fun. So I have three statements and I can write as many as I want if I execute this. Let's see, we see all three statements. So the, the f function um, passes the control flow, or the function call passes the control flow to the function. It'll execute anything, everything here. At the end, it will go back to where the function came from. So for example, if I put here before function, and then I put an output statement after function, we will see that when I run this, it will output the C out. Then it will go execute all the statements here in the function 
and then return. So this was in the main, this was inside the function, and this returned back to the main and continued in the main. Now what I could also do is I can call a function multiple times. If I need, the, need to run this code multiple times, anywhere I want to call it, execute this code, I call the function. For example, now I call it twice here and one time after the after function. So we can see one time the code got executed here, another time here, it returned to the main, output the C out here in the main, and then it called the function again, which is this part. And this is really the powerful part of functions, that when we have duplicated code, instead of making our main or other functions really long, we can wrap that code into a function and wherever we need it, we just call a function. And this way we have a single line of code and that, that can run the code inside the function multiple times. Now this is particular nice once we reduce the code overall, we don't have duplicated code, but also if we have an error, let's say I have a typo here, and I notice this in my output, I don't have to change, change it and fix the error multiple times because I have duplicated code. When I have a function, the code only exists once, I can make the error one time and it would fix that every, everywhere where I use that function. Now, it's important to know that functions can be called from anywhere. So let's say we have another function, print goodbye. The goodbye, I, have, I provide an implementation here and I see out goodbye. And I could, could call this function also from this function here. Print goodbye. What will this do? So the program flow always starts with the main, so it would output the C out here. Then it would go to the function. In the function, it would execute these three. Then there's another function call. So it would go execute the statements in this function. There could be other function calls here as well. So we have any number of nesting. But in this case, it ends here, so it would return to where the function was called, so right here. If there's any code after the function call, it will execute this. In this case, there is none, so it returns back to the main here, and then calls the function again. It would execute here, 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 go into the print goodbye function, execute, return to the caller. The caller returns to the, to the caller of itself, and this is the main, and then continues here. So we have any nested level of functions um, that we can do. So we can call functions from anywhere where we want to. I hope this gives you a basic idea of how to use functions. Please check out my next video where I go over function parameters, arguments, and return types. Thank you for watching.